Okay, welcome back to the reading vlog. It is Tuesday. Um, it's the first time I talked to you in the vlog. I think I've filmed one or two clips, anything like that. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do a quick um, check-in and start the vlog because I probably won't read anything at all today. Um, I have a really bad headache and it just doesn't want to go away. So yeah, reading with a headache is something I don't do. I can't deal with that. Um, but I also wanted to do a quick little check-in with what I've read over the weekend. Also not much, because um, we had a little Christmas party with my mother-in-law. Um, but before I forget doing a check-in, I thought I'd quickly do that. And then hopefully tomorrow the headache is gone and we can resume with the normal program. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did continue a little bit with John Dice at the end. I'm 50 pages in now and we are now, well, pretty much David, the other main character, is currently telling like a reporter pretty much their story and it's it's like one of those books, you know, where he's like, okay, let's start at the beginning and then you pretty much um, skip between like the beginning and the current times, uh, him talking to the reporter and then what happened um, to them. And um, yeah, it's still really funny. I am kind of interested to see where this goes, and I do think that John dies at the end. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, but it seems like it a little bit. So yeah, I'm kind of interested to see where it goes, but I still don't know much about it. The book where I made much more progress is the Clive Kastner book, Race of the Titanic. I'm now um, 110 pages in, and even though Doug Pitt did make an appearance once, um, we haven't had anything from his perspective yet, which is so interesting because it, I mean, it says a Dirk Pitt novel. Like, why is he not a main character? I mean, I'm 110 pages in and all we've heard about are different characters. But um, other than that, the story is kind of interesting. I like the trajectory of the story right now, but I am afraid that it will change once, you know, we get more into, like, the fighting stuff and like getting to the Titanic and um, getting the uh, the stuff that is in there because at some point Russia has to intervene um, as far as I can see it um, because they do both like the USA and Russia they both want um, some stuff that is in the Titanic they don't know that yet still but they're getting there at least the Americans and I'm pretty sure at some point Dirk Pitt will come in and he's then task with getting that, but we're not there still. So yeah, I'm really interested where that is going. But so far it's pretty much just like um, some like high ranking government people trying to find out where this like, I think it's an ore, um, where that stuff is. And that part is actually kind of interesting. I like that part. So yeah, it's going actually a lot better than I thought. Um, but I'm a little bit afraid that the book will change once Dirk Pitt actually becomes the main character, uh, which I would think he would do, but maybe I'm just really, um, yeah, confused about how this series works. I mean, it is the first Dirk Pitt novel that I've read. I haven't read anything else, so I don't know, but I would assume if, you know, there's a big fat, like, a Dirk Pitt novel on there that he would actually be a main character. So yeah, I'm a little bit confused about that, but I have a lot of fun reading that, which is nice because I was afraid of that. Um, I don't think I have read a Clive Castler novel so far, but the other ones that I bought with them, the James Patterson ones and the James Rowlands ones, I haven't had much luck with. Um, so I was afraid of the Clive Castler ones as well, but they seem to be going better which is nice. So yeah, hopefully the um, headache will go. I mean, I already have it for nearly half a day. It's my lunch break right now, um, because obviously I do still have to work. Um, so yeah, hopefully it will go and I can read a little bit tonight, but I don't know. And also I nearly finished an audiobook. Um, it is, oh, I forgot the title. I will put it here, um, but it is about um, an excavation of some, um, uh, um, not 
well, not human, humans, uh, our ancestors pretty much, and um, finding new things. I've already listened to another audiobook about that thing, but it was written by a different person of that excavation. So I know a lot of the facts already, but I kind of like the perspective of our author because he's especially, well, he lost weight because he couldn't get through the small narrow tunnels to get through the cave. And so the, how he, so he especially lost weight to be able to do that. And just his perspective and his joy and his fears are really interesting to hear about because it is something you don't often get in books about excavations. So yeah, it is interesting. I'm nearly finished with that. I actually listened to a lot of that um, yesterday on Saturday. So that is actually, I think, quite a good and nice perspective. So yeah, I will most likely finish that today. Um, because listen to an audiobook I can do, so yeah, we can then talk about my reading for that tomorrow. And the shelves I will also show you tomorrow. I did re finish rearranging on Saturday. I just, in the evening, I was really motivated to do it and I forgot to film anything. So I haven't filmed the rest of the rearranging. So I will show you that tomorrow, how it looks and everything, you know, all of that. So yeah, I hope that works out, even though I don't have the footage of doing it because I forgot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that is my quick little check-in because I'm gonna take another painkiller and hopefully at some point the headache will go. Um, who knows, you know. So, hope your week is starting better. <laughs> I did quite a bit of reading. Um, I did read a little bit yesterday. I managed to get rid of the headache like late in the afternoon and I sat down and read a little bit. Um, I finished the audiobook. Um, I gave the audiobook four and a half stars. I like the perspective. Um, it wasn't perfect but I think the perspective of like the guy and his journey to get into the cave and to, you know, make new discoveries, I think is a really valuable um, perspective. And so, yeah, I really like that. So I give it four and a half stars. It is a short book. I think it was six hours to the audiobook. So it wasn't well, six or eight hours, maybe. But it felt really short, which, to be fair, for a nonfiction book is kind of nice. Sometimes when they feel like 300 hours, it's really annoying. <laughs> so yeah, I did like that book and four and a half stars. Um, so yeah, that was actually really nice. Um, and then I did continue a little bit with um, Race to the Titanic and now I'm halfway through. Um, so I'm at page 200 pretty much and I think the book is like 430 pages. So yeah. I'm roughly halfway through and I don't really get it. <laughs> it says it's a Dirk Pitt novel. We had one really short chapter from his perspective. He does play a role, but in my opinion, up until now, he doesn't play a big role. Like, there are so many other people who play roles that he really is, like, not an important character in the novel, which I think is rather interesting and a little bit irritating because I don't really know about a series that does it that way. And I don't know if it's typical for the Dirk Pitt series. So um, that might be just my um, missing knowledge about the series. But yeah, it's, it's weird, to be honest. And because of that, I kind of um, thought it would be more of like, you know, an adventure novel from like that one perspective. But right now it's more of um, a political thriller, I would say, with the Titanic as like kind of an adventure piece in the middle. And I don't enjoy political thrillers. So I think for what it is, I think it's a good book. I enjoy it more than I have a lot of the other political thrillers I've read so far. But because it's mainly political bickering between people, I don't enjoy that particularly much. Um, so yeah, I, I don't love the book, but I think it's fine for what it is. Um, it's just not something I would choose. So now I'm really interested to see how much of the Dirk Pitt novels is just politics. 
um, because to me it doesn't sound like that like the this one doesn't have a blurb but I think a few of my other ones have a blurb and they didn't sound that political um, even though he is like a member of like a political organization um, but yeah I find that really irritating but yeah it's better than expected but not than expected I think it's a little bit worse than expected but like it's better than most of the books of that caliber that I've read so far because I normally really don't enjoy them so I think uh, right now it's like a straight three stars I don't expect it to change to be honest um, but yeah that is pretty much where I am at right now so halfway through and it's Wednesday so my actual hope is to finish this tomorrow I will read a little bit tonight still like if I could get to like 230 that would be nice um, or 250 and then I could finish this tomorrow um, have it done and you know have a start to this series and then I could continue with the John Dice at the End book so that would actually be quite good so I think I will try to like muster through this um, other than that I crocheted um, my gift for um, my grandmother-in-law um, today um, she is getting this crochet hat and I do have to start the second one for my mother-in-law um, because yeah she picked the color um, she doesn't know I'm making her one as well but um, yeah she asked me to make one for um, her mother so yeah I finished this one in like I would say it's like half a day of work but I worked really slowly because I did it like while it's doing other things but yeah I finished it it looks really nice it feels really nice and uh, yeah I'm really happy crocheting hats is really it's not a hard thing um it's just you know sit down and do it and then the other thing I'm currently doing which is why I took so long to crochet that is I'm currently preparing my reading journal for the next year I did fall off the wagon with my one from this year but the main problem is I wrote that like each and every month I prepared the month but that got kind of annoying and I stopped doing it because of that so this time around I'm preparing the whole thing now so that I only have to you know write in it in the coming year which I think will work much better I did wanted to buy one on Amazon but I hated the cover and so I took it as, ex as inspiration and I will show you like more of a tool once it's finished but yeah this is pretty much the review sites for books in this one now and I think it looks really really nice um, so yeah that for example is like what my reviews will then be looking like once I fill them out and then I did also already start preparing like reading challenges and stuff but I will show you that more in detail in my I think my goals, the, my goals video for next year, I will show what I did with this. But yes, I'm, so I'm currently working on preparing this so that I can actually enjoy using it coming the next year, you know. So that is pretty much all I'm doing right now. And yeah, I had quite the productive day, which is actually really, really nice. That is pretty much all for today. <laughs> um, I will now probably continue with my reading journal and continue with preparing that and then later on I will continue with this one but yeah hopefully I can give you a finished update tomorrow but we'll see but I have high hopes for me to finish this tomorrow because it does reach relatively quickly um, it's just I'm a little bit disinterested in the politics so you know it is what it is you can't really always tell that um, in the beginning when you pick up a book so yeah okay so it is oh god thursday afternoon um i well the lighting looks like shit but we have um light bulbs coming so the lighting should actually change for the better in the next few days but <laughs> um i did get myself like one of those small little tripods for my phone so now I can have a little bit of better filming angles, you know, and make the vlogs look a little bit better because I don't have to hold the phone itself. So yeah, hopefully that will improve at least like the look of the vlog a little bit. But um, yeah, that came and I 
tried it and I'm actually really happy with that. And now, huh? Lisa. Okay, I finished what I said I would. I finished Race the Titanic. And I have like really, really mixed feelings about this book. So I'm really not... Well, I gave it three stars. Let's start with that. Um, I think I just expected something really, really different and than what I got. So mm, I think that happens a lot with books for me. So yeah, maybe I just need to learn to expect different things. But okay, so um, I had to have a little short little talk with this one because it doesn't know what he wants. But I have to close the door because my partner is gaming and he's pretty loud um, because he's playing with his friends, you know, so for you to not hear him as loud, I have to close the door, but yeah, this one doesn't know what he wants, um, but yeah, so <laughs> three stars, mixed feelings. Um, this one is pretty much a political thriller in my opinion, um, and I don't like that. It's not something I enjoy reading. I hate stuff about politics. Um, I, I just don't enjoy it. I don't get how people can enjoy something like that. I just get so tired of it. Um, so yeah, it's a political thriller. I don't enjoy that type of book, which I'm really surprised that I still gave it three stars because I think for like a political thriller, at least from a viewpoint of somebody who doesn't like political thrillers, the book is actually quite okay. Um, what I found to be really, really um interesting i mean this is the fourth book in the series maybe i just um should have started by th with the first one but story by i don't think that it's really mattering that much but it is a dirk pitt novel and dirk pitt's but he, he plays like a big role in like the conclusion but pages wise in the book he plays a really really small role and that surprised me so much because obviously I expected him to be the main character but he really isn't the main character we have like a whole lot of like politicians and like higher up managers and stuff who are pretty much the main characters and not him so yeah I found that really surprising that it is a book in this series so yeah I don't really get that um, I mean I guess you can do that but it was really surprising um, and then, well, one positive thing um, that I found out just at the end, because it's like, um, it is like in the end here, um, that actually Clive Kassler, um, he found, he, he found it, is that the right version of the word? But he found the NUMA, the, um, which is an actual organization that is pretty much um, a, like a, a non-profit a crew of volunteers who help retrieve treasure of the seas and to actually restore it and keep the history of it. And our main character in the book actually works for Numa, so I found that to be really interesting. I think it's a cool thing. Um, he actively, like Clive Kassler, the author, actively participates in um, bringing ships up from the sea bottom and restoring stuff. And yeah, so that is a really, really cool thing. Um, so yeah, three stars on and all. It's just not... Um, a genre I particularly enjoy. I'm a little bit afraid of the other Clive Kassler books now because I do have a lot. Um, I mean it wasn't a bad book, you know, I can say that it wasn't a bad book, it's just that it's not something I love reading. Um, so yeah, I will see if all of the Clive Kassler, but all of the books in the Dog Pit novel are like that. Um, Maybe I will just try some of them and we'll see how they are. And then I do have some from a different series um, that isn't the new Files, so I will have to look into that if that is also something really similar or if that is actually more of like, you know, the adventure type novel or like a military thriller, whatever. But I finished it. <laughs> that is the important thing. So. Um, I won't read anything else today. I have a hard time finding a new audiobook, so I haven't started a new audiobook yet. I don't really know what to do with that, but yeah, the books I do want to listen to, I can't get at the moment. I'm on their waitlist, but you know, waitlists are long at my library. 
Um, so I really don't listen to anything. So I will go and do some more gaming right now. And then tomorrow I will continue with John Dice at the end because I'm really excited to see where this book is going. Um, we'll see. I doubt that I will finish it this week still, but to be honest, you never know. Um, I am really into reading right now. I think I found a little bit of my reading mojo back. Because even though this isn't what I love to read, I did actually really read it quite quickly and I did enjoy the process of reading it, even though it isn't a genre I love to read. So yeah, I think I'm getting into like a good reading speed right now. So yeah, I'm really happy about that. And yeah, so hopefully I can fix the lighting um, next in this room here and then we'll have a little bit of better perspectives. And now I will quickly show you the rearranged bookshelves because I promised that and I haven't done that yet. So let's switch perspective and show you what I did with the bookshelves. We have the unread books on this side and then on this side up until there. Those are all of the unread books. And then under that we have nonfiction, which is only one shelf, which is totally fine with me. Um, so yeah, we have pretty much true crime and then generally other nonfiction because I really don't own that much nonfiction. Um, I do tend to listen to more audiobooks when it comes to nonfiction um, rather than actually owning the books. And then we have the books I'm partial to. Um, I mean, or I didn't know where to put them. So we have like, you know, Dan Brown, Kathy Rice, a little bit of like the books I like, um, but... You know, they're fine. And then down there, that is the shelf of disgraced books. Those are the books I really didn't enjoy particularly. And they live there. Um, don't know what I will do with them. But, you know, those are these two shelves. And then we switch over to here. And then we have my graphic novels because they wouldn't fit anywhere else. And then we have my classics and my Stephen King books. Those are in the white shelf. And then I have some space. Um, for, you know, more books. And then, as you can see, it looks like this now. I sorted how I thought it looked good. These have no genre sorting, no alphabetical sorting. Like, they really have only my taste as sorting, as good as it worked out. So, you know, we have all of my um, book box books up there. Then we have, you know, my favorite sci-fi, a shelf for Brenton Sanderson, then we have, you know, my favorite, a few of my favorite, like, fantasy books and Terry Pratchett down there. And as you can see, I have quite a bit of shelf space now, um, which is great because, you know, in the end, all of these books are supposed to be on that side. <laughs> so hopefully at some point that will work out. But yeah, and then we have my Tolkien shelf, you know, and more fantasy more sci-fi down here and then well we have the um Harry Potter books um my Rick Riordan books and then here were a little bit the books where I didn't know where to put them my Neil Gaiman books mm -hmm. my Neil Gaiman books have to stay up there because the Sandman novels won't fit anywhere else and you know there wasn't any space and because I have so many unread book books books I let that, that space empty because that will fill up relatively easy. So yeah, those have to stay there. <laughs> and then we have, you know, books where I didn't really know where else to put them. And so yeah, they look like that at the moment. Um, at some point I will sort them into like a better fitting look. But for right now, I think that's totally fine. But yeah, that is my rearranging. So I have a lot of space now where the unread books can go in, which really, really satisfies me because before that I had no space to move the books around when I had to fit new books in and now I do have that space so yeah those are my shelves I like them okay it is Saturday now um let's talk a little bit about this one before I end the vlog um I did continue with John Dice at the end I am not that far into it to be honest um i am at page 80 so i haven't read that much more yesterday i just didn't get to reading at all which is why i didn't check in i just did not have time um, i had a little bit of stuff to do and then in the evening i skyped with my friend so yeah um and i then continued with it this morning as funny as this book is 
I feel like it's too much at the beginning. I am rapidly losing interest, which is really, really sad, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. I think I like the concept of the story. I'm sorry, I have a dog hair in my mouth. Um, I really like the concept of the story, but I, I think the book feels so chaotic that I really... I don't know. It, it is losing my interest, which I, it's sad. I don't want to lose interest. Um, but yeah, I will continue with this, but I really don't see myself reading much more today. So yeah, I much rather end the vlog earlier because I'm pretty sure that I won't read anything else, you know. Also, I do have quite a bit of stuff to do today still. You know, it's the Christmas season, so there's always stuff to do. Um, but yeah, I just filmed Thursday's video, so I'm a little bit early with that, which I'm really, really happy that I already finished that. Um, so yeah, I have to edit that, you know, get that all done with because I do still have to work next week. I only, I'm only off the week after Christmas and then the first week in January. So um, yeah, I don't really have time to prepare much for before Christmas. So yeah, yeah, not that much reading now for the end of the week. But to be honest, I, I don't know. This one reads really, really slow. Um, which is kind of the contrast, like a really, really harsh contrast to Race the Titanic because that one read so fast and this one, you know, is so slow going and, you know, it, it just loses my interest. I don't know. I will finish it um, or I will DNF it if I cannot stand it. But, you know, right, at the, right now I do want to know what will happen. I just... I'm not sure about the book. And it started so funny, but it lost me so, so fast. I don't know. I mean, I have to be honest, it's not a book I ever heard about. I have never heard about the movie, so I think... I don't know. It, there, it, it says that it's a movie. I don't know if it's a movie, to be honest. I haven't Googled that. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. This wasn't the ending I wanted to give you for the vlog. I kind of wanted to finish this before I finished the vlog, but yeah, there's no way I'm going to do that. So, yeah, I'm kind of finishing the vlog here. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Um, I, I promise you I'm actively trying to get better with vlogging, but it's not easy because I'm not really like that much of... I, I enjoy doing the vlogs, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, but I do still have a lot to learn, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the vlog and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.